Welcome to a course on complex analysis. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the vector form of a complex numbers. Can we treat complex numbers as vectors? Yes, of course we can. How are we going to do it? And how are we going to perform the other operations on complex numbers? That is what we are going to see in this lecture. Let us explore. As we have seen in the uh, course of uh, real analysis and the calculus for several real variables, in one dimensional case, okay, one dimensional means a real line, okay. In real line, in order to come to a particular point, we have only two directions, either this one or this one, okay. Whereas in when we deal things in two dimension, we in order to come to a particular point, we have infinite number of possible directions so directions means what it is a vector right so the vector has a direction so this has something to do with the complex analysis being treated as a vectors so a complex number z that is treated as an ordered pair x y okay so if you have something like this okay x u again excuse me for the bad diagram Mm. So that is if you consider this as the uh, real axis and this as imaginary axis then any point x, y this is this distance is x and this distance is y okay this may be treated as a vector from an origin to this point. Okay, so this vector is nothing but x plus iota times of y. Okay, suppose what if you have a number minus 2 comma 1. Okay, suppose you will have to do this one minus 2. So, minus 2 is somewhere going to be here and 1 is somewhere here. So, here you are going to have this one. So, this is going to be your vector minus 2 comma 1 and this may be written as minus 2 plus 1 times of iota okay this may be written like this so when you plot this you write this as minus 2 comma 1 and as a vector this is minus 2 plus iota 1 times of iota okay so hope you have the understanding of uh, how we can plot these things for the simplicity purpose i have drawn only the upper half of the plane Okay, your complex number may lie anywhere on this, right? Now, supposing uh, we have a vector z1 and z2, okay? Suppose let me have a vector, this is my vector, is it z1, okay? I have another vector, which is z2, okay? The sum of these two is going to be an another vector. Okay. This is z1 plus z2. Okay. This may be found like this. Okay. This is going to be uh, this vector, this length. Okay. The length, the direction and the length is preserved. This is z2 and this is z1. The sum of these things is going to be the addition of two vectors z1 and z2 okay we have seen the addition of complex numbers as uh, as merely an operation but this has some geometrical meaning like this as well okay then what is the magnitude of this vector okay what whenever we talk about vectors we will have to talk about the magnitude of the vectors as well so the magnitude of the vector is given by the under root x squared plus y squared you don't have to get confused with whether to take a positive square root or a negative square root. Here we are taking the positive square root. Right. So what does this physically mean? This means the distance of a vector from the origin. Okay. So this distance here you have the distance, right? This is under root x squared plus y squared. So, distance from the origin to a particular point on the plane is given by under root x squared plus y squared, which is the magnitude of the vector that we uh, that is our complex number, right? So, suppose if you have to calculate the distance between any two points, 
how are we going to do so so that is given by simply absolute of z1 minus z2 so this is nothing but uh, x1 minus x2 plus iota times of y1 minus y2 you may now treat this as here you have this one here you have this one just to find the distance between these two vectors okay i think this may not be visible let me use a laser pointer so if you have to find the distance between these two vectors it is better to subtract these two things and find what that number is and find the uh, magnitude of that vector and that will very well that will very well give you the that is absolute under root x1 plus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared this is going to be the distance between any two points okay if you have to practically uh, diagrammatically see what is happening with the subtraction let me show you that as well okay so you have your uh, okay let me use different colors for the better understanding so if you if you have this as your z1 okay this as your uh, this as your z2 okay let this be my uh, z1 vector and let this be my z2 vector okay now from here you will have to come in the negative direction z1 minus z2 so the same thing but in the negative direction you approach so you will come here so from the origin to this point okay so from the origin to this point is going to be your z1 minus z2 vector okay so what this is this is absolute of z1 minus z2 okay so in the positive sense it's going to be like this and in the negative sense it's going to be like this so here with which uh, i would like to state some of the properties of this magnitude of uh, complex numbers that is the absolute value of the complex numbers this is also called as modulus of a complex number okay a real part of z smaller than or equals absolute of real part of z which is smaller than or equals absolute of z and the same goes for imaginary of z less than or equals absolute of imaginary of z less than or equals absolute of z okay and uh, also we have one more property that is absolute of z squared is real part of z squared plus imaginary part of z squared okay and the triangle inequality is preserved for complex numbers as well so this is true also we have one more property that is absolute of z1 plus absolute of sorry absolute of z1 plus z2 is bigger than or equals absolute of absolute of z1 minus absolute z2 and this not only holds true for uh, addition this is also true for subtraction as well okay so in general combining uh, these things we may write uh, the combination let me write it in another color so absolute of absolute z1 minus absolute z2 is smaller than or equals absolute of z1 plus or minus absolute of z2 smaller than or equals absolute of z1 plus absolute of z2 okay so combining these two things we have this property as well now uh, the next thing that we are going to see is the conjugate of a complex number okay so conjugate of a complex number is just the reflection of the vector in about the real axis okay if you have a com so exactly the reflection of this along real axis is going to be something like this so x comma minus y okay reflection about the real axis is going to be the conjugate of any complex number is it so and that is denoted as if z that is x comma y or uh, x plus iota times of y is your complex number then the conjugate is denoted as z bar that is x comma minus y or also it may be written as x minus iota times of y okay so for which also we have a uh, few properties that is 
z1 plus z2 whole conjugate is z1 conjugate plus z2 conjugate that you may just write and see what is z1 z1 plus z2 that is x1 plus x2 plus i to times of y1 plus y2 and take the conjugate and do the calculations you will get this one so this is also true for the uh, subtraction as well so z1 bar minus z2 bar and if you take the conjugate to a conjugate you will get back your original z itself and the absolute of z bar is same as that of absolute of z okay and uh, z1 z2 whole conjugate is z1 conjugate z2 conjugate so z1 upon z2 whole conjugate is z1 conjugate upon z2 conjugate provided z2 is not zero and uh, with the help of uh, conjugate we shall write real part of z as z plus z bar upon 2 and the imaginary of z shall be written as z minus z bar upon 2i okay also z multiplied with z bar is absolute of z absolute of z squared so with which you can calculate uh, you can perform many operations on complex numbers of course right so the next one is the exponential form of uh, complex numbers which i shall okay let me write here itself so exponential form that is till now we have we are dealing the complex number z in a rectangular coordinates with x and y okay sometimes this may uh, we may be in a need to treat them in polar coordinates that we study in the calculus of several variables case that is using r and theta so the z may be written as r times of cos theta plus i sin theta so here this r is nothing but the absolute of z and theta is the argument of z that is tan inverse of y upon x okay we have argument of z and the argument of z this is called as principal argument so principal are uh, value lie between minus pi 2 pi okay so the, in general this argument of z may be written as principal argument plus 2 pi okay and uh, this has some properties uh, which i i would request you to refer the properties of these arguments so these are some notations uh, with which also we can write down the uh, complex numbers with which let me move to the other things that is if you write uh, z1 as okay here uh, i would like to talk about one more thing your e bar i theta may be written as cos theta plus i iota times of sin theta that is e bar iota theta is cos theta plus iota times of sin theta so if your z1 takes the form r1 e to the power iota times of theta 1 and uh, your z2 is r2 e to the power iota times of theta 2 then your product z1 z2 is r1 r2 e to the power iota times of theta 1 plus theta 2 and similarly z1 upon z2 is r1 upon r2 e to the power iota times of theta 1 minus theta 2 okay your z inverse is 1 upon r e to the power minus iota times of theta so like if you have to find out z to the power n this is r to the power n e to the power i n theta and if you identify what is this uh, e to the power i n theta let me do it for the two things okay this was due to the fact that it is this so this shall be written as cos theta plus i iota times of sin theta multiplied with cos theta plus iota times of sin theta and if you make a product of these two things you are going to get what 
का स्क्वयर तीटा माइनस सैन स्क्वयर तीटा प्लस हाइड्रो टाइम आफ का तीटा सैन तीटा प्लस सैन तीटा का तीटा सो वाट आर वि गोयिंग टू हेव हि वि हेव का स्क्वयर तीटा माइनस सैन स्क्वयर तीटा प्लस टू ई टाइम आफ सैन तीटा का तीटा सो दिस इज सिंपली का टू तीटा प्लस हाइड्रो टाइम आफ सैन टू तीटा सो द The ideology can be extended and see e to the power i n t i to times of n theta is cos n theta plus i to times of sin n theta. So in general, is it to the power n may be written like this, and is it to the power minus m? If you have something like this, this may be written as z to the power minus one to the power m. So this turns to be another complex number, and to the power m that you can write using this. Uh, polar notation that gives you the uh, necessary things okay and uh, now i would like to state few more properties of the uh, arguments that is the argument of is it one is it two is argument of is it one sorry argument of z1 plus argument of z2 okay so but your principal argument of z1 z2 need not be equal to argument of z1 plus argument of z2 okay for which let me give you an uh, example consider your z1 to be minus 1 and z2 to be i so z1 z2 is minus i if you calculate what is your argument of uh, z1 that is pi argument of z2 is pi upon 2 and argument of z1 c2 is minus pi upon 2 okay if you just make the addition of these two things you are not getting it to be so okay but if you just add uh, here if you notice argument of Z one plus argument of Z two, this is pi plus pi upon two, which happens to be three pi upon two. Okay, so in general, uh, I have told you people that this may be written as plus two pi times. So if you add this argument of Z one plus Z two plus two pi, so this plus two pi may be any multiple of uh, any integer multiple of two pi. Okay. So if you do so, that is minus pi upon two plus three pi. Ah, uh, like if you add a uh, two pi, you are going to get three pi upon two. So this very well tells you that your argument of z one z two is same as that of argument of z one plus argument of z two. Right. So you can add. This is periodic with period two pi. So you can add any number of periods to balance these things. okay this is not true in the case of principal argument okay and similarly uh, argument of z1 upon z2 is argument of z1 minus argument of z2 whereas the equality for the principal argument does not hold to be true right so these are the basics that i have planned for the discussion and in the next uh, lecture we will enter into the uh, regions and we will talk about the limits continuity all those stuff thank you